in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Special word of welcome to any of our visitors joining us on this wonderful holiday weekend. May we give thanks to the Lord for the opportunity to participate in our Lord's tremendous labor of love. My dear brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption. Look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Let us be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, say to those whose hearts are frightened be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened. The ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, and then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. 
The word of the Lord. Sponsorial Psalm, praise the Lord, my soul. The God of Jacob keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. The fatherless and the widow, the Lord sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, through all generations. Alleluia. Reading from the letter of St. James. My brothers and sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and a poor person in shabby clothes also comes in, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say, Sit here, please, while you say to the poor one, Stand there, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil designs? Listen, my brothers and sisters, did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd and putting his finger 
into the man's ears and spitting, touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Epitha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened, his speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening. How wonderful for us to enjoy a wee bit of sunshine on this holiday weekend, to be able to bask in the warmth of our Lord's love. Maybe we even made our way to the riverside and enjoyed a little music. But most importantly tonight, we are invited to see the healing work of Christ. Jesus made aware of the needs of a man goes and reaches out to him quite literally sticking his fingers in the ears and spitting touched his tongue curing the man enabling him to be able to hear to proclaim, to speak, to be able to share his life with one another. Now, thinking back within my own family, uh, someone who was able to get others to uh, open up, I think was my grandfather, good old Grandpa Hennis. Uh, you could put him in a room with anybody and he would strike up some sort of conversation even if the other person didn't say a word. And more often than not, he could figure out how he was related to someone too. Now, I wouldn't say he was a miracle worker, but I do know he would often get his finger involved. And I know, especially with my younger cousins, he would often extend his finger and invite them to pull it. Let's just say when Grandpa was opened, we all knew it. <sighs> Alas. Now, today... Here in this place, we are called to open our hearts to Christ's love. And now, I'm sure most of us are thinking, oh, great father, been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, let's move on. We're, we're, I'm here, father. My, my heart's open. And I don't doubt that each and every one of us, yeah, our hearts are. Our hearts are. They can always be a bit more open. When I talk to the second graders, you know, they get ready for First Communion and all that jazz. You know, we talk about, you know, how is it that you receive and you know, of course, we'd go over hands and make the throne and uh, welcome the Lord, the King of the universe, and place his love on your tongue. 
But then, uh, well, not so much these COVID days, but pre-COVID, we would also talk, how is it that you receive on the tongue? Open, open wide and stick out your tongue. Seems, seems simple enough. Open wide, stick out your tongue. But when you've got a second grader, you don't got much of a mouth to begin with. And the host is a certain size. And then you get the really pious kids. God bless them. God loves them. They love Jesus. And they're embarrassed. And they don't want anybody to see. So they just open their mouth. And I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. I have flashbacks to the 70s. All of a sudden, I'm Luke Skywalker on the Death Star trying to fly this thing through. <sighs> Children, you are about to receive Jesus. We want to make his love as easy as possible to enter our hearts so open wide, stick out the tongue. Ah, ah. I want to see your tonsils. And we talk about that. And it's, and they're all a little nervous, but eventually we get there. Father, I feel weird making this. Well, you shouldn't be making a face. We're just opening a mouth. But the thing about it is, sometimes we treat our relationship with God like, well, as long as I open my heart a little bit, God's love should find its way in. And yeah, if there's, if there's a crack on the roof, you're going to get a drippity drop. But if we have the courage to truly open our hearts then the floodgates can open. We can have a deluge. We can be surrounded by Christ's love. What does it mean to open our hearts to God? Well, first of all, if there's anything that's not of God in our heart, that's got to go. If there's any hurt, pain, hatred, those people we can't stand, won't forgive, don't love. We need to bring that to Jesus. We need to look at our relationship with God. Do I make time for the Lord? In the morning, in the evening, throughout the day, do I talk to God? Do I study his scriptures? Do I come to his house and pray before the infinite who imprisons himself out of love? in the Eucharist for us? Do I embrace his teachings, which are the teachings of the church? That's not to say we, we go carte blanche and turn off our will and our intellect and become little mindless robots. But do I know what the teachings of the church is? is? More importantly, do I know why? I studied it. How is it that I love my neighbor? Recognizing my neighbor is anybody I see. Anybody I know of. Anybody that exists in this world. My neighbor, my brother, my sister, my person who I ought to care about deeply and intimately and should strive to help on their journey. Past week's been crazy. All sorts of hurricanes, rains, flooding. Look at our brothers and sisters in the Middle East as you see one regime topple and another one quickly get established. We look in our own backyard all the different divisions we have to wear a mask, to not wear a mask, to get vaccinated and not get vaccinated, let alone the fun ones like Democrat and Republican and all those other things. 
So often we find ways to narrow our scope. Find ways to exclude. Find ways to justify those hurts and those hatreds that we hold on to. Today, 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 may that word of love that tremendous Aramaic, Aramaic word that Jesus proclaimed that was said at every baptism I've ever presided over. Apitha. Be open. Not just a little, but a lot. May God Bless you always. before our Lord, may we open our hearts as together we proclaim the, uh, the faith we profess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, we, your beloved children, are mindful of the tremendous love that you have for each and every one of us. On this most holy and beautiful evening, we ask that you open our hearts as we pray for our brothers and sisters. That God's salvation may reach to the ends of the earth through the ministry of the church, we pray to the Lord that the actions of all who govern will imitate the Lord, who is just in all his ways and defend the most innocent among us. We pray to the Lord. Were our nation on Labor Day that our work will participate in God's glory, we pray to the Lord. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood and to consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. 
for peace in the Middle East, for the protection of those who serve our nation and the armed forces, we pray to the Lord. For the grace this week to have our ears open and attentive to the word of God in our life, we pray to the Lord. For the intentions inscribed in our book of prayer, in our prayer baskets, lifted to Jesus in the quiet of our heart, we pray to the Lord. For all of our beloved dead, especially Betty Wanzel, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, we, your beloved children, lift these prayers up to you through Christ our Lord. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory. Father most holy, for you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim.
give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone, the creator might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death. Rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that, bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, May this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. While they were at supper, took bread, blessed, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who, 
partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died, the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
together, let us pray the Anima Christi as found in our worship aid. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Separate from thee, let me never be. From the malignant enemy, defend me. At the hour of death, call me. And close to thee, bide me. That it, thy saints I may be praising thee forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. This month of September is one that had a very uh, important place in the life and the love of, of St. Mother Teresa um, throughout this month in our worship aids uh, and our bulletins will be seeing um, reflections on uh, Mother Teresa and we'll also be praying for the month of September the Anima Christi, this great uh, prayer much older than of course Mother Teresa but she was such a, a great lover of that prayer I thought it would be nice for us to kind of try it on for a month uh, as we uh, remember all of those great saints that have gone before us next weekend is uh, Panacea weekend and it'll be uh, uh, all sorts of fun and excitement over at Pacelli um, with the uh, current state of the world. Um, everything will be outside. We're getting a few more tents than normal, um, so that way we should be able to uh, uh, socially, distantly gather together and to celebrate and to have all sorts of great fun too. So I hope you're able to make it and to show support for our Catholic schools. Get out there, enjoy this beautiful uh, uh, Labor Day weekend, have some great fun, safe travels to those who are heading for home, but may we be mindful that every day God is calling unto us, epitha, be open, may our hearts be always open to his love. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.